When I saw that it was Jeff standing behind me, I wanted to throw up. <laughs> Jeff was the head, of, the head of HR, and I knew exactly why he was at my desk. I was working in a 3D post-conversion studio, an industry that had blown up two years before. But the problem with the film industry is that it's feast or famine, and the months leading up to this were downright Dickensian. In an effort just to keep the doors open, the company was on its third round of layoffs. So when Jeff asked me to join him in his office, I knew my career in the third dimension was over. I wanted to scream, Fuck off, Jeff! You can't do this to me! You don't know, don't you know who I am? Fire Karen! Karen fucking sucks! I wanted to chop him in the throat and run away throwing office furniture in my wake as if I could outrun the impending firing in an action movie like Getaway. <laughs> I knew I couldn't, though, so I took my check and packed up my Hellboy figurines and I said my goodbyes. <laughs> but not before cutting off Jeff's condolences with an outburst of I'm fucked! I took solace in the fact that I had just paid my rent a week before, and my last check was enough to cover the following month. I was still scared, though, because I didn't know what was going to happen after that. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills or feed myself. I had never been good at saving. A year before, I was working 70 hours a week, giving Shrek more dimensions that he can dream of, <laughs> getting paid far more than I needed to survive, and I saved all of zero dollars. <laughs> I knew I was going to be getting unemployment benefits, but it did little to calm me because I didn't know how much or how long they would last. There was nothing I could do until then, so I decided to calm my nerves the best way I knew how. I said, fuck it, and I got drunk. <laughs> Once I found out that I'd be getting nearly the full amount available, I was able to see the silver lining of my situation. Not long before I'd been laid off, I, decided to, I had started doing stand-up comedy. And I knew right away that that's what I wanted to do with my life. Now, I had an income that was enough to live off of, but no job to go to every day. It was like I was being paid to be a comedian. <laughs> After that, I thought it'd be a good idea to not even look for a job. <laughs> as long as the, un the California unemployment system thought I was looking for work, they'd send me money and I didn't have to put on pants in the morning. It was win-win. <laughs> I figured I could ride the checks for six months or so, and then a few weeks before I was out of money, I'd just find a job, no problem. For the first time in almost two years, I woke up on a Monday morning without the assistance of an alarm that sounded like it was going to self-destruct. I laid in bed for an hour before getting up to drink a cup of coffee on my balcony while smoking what felt like a victory cigarette. <laughs> I may have lost my job, but I gained the freedom that everyone wants. I didn't have to rush to get ready in the morning. I didn't have to sit in traffic with hordes of n uh, nine to fivers, all going to jobs they didn't like. I didn't have to play nice with anyone that said things like, Monday's right. <laughs> My day belonged to me, and I could do whatever I wanted with it. I lounged around my one bedroom apartment, playing video games and marathoning entire TV series. At night, I would hang out with friends and occasionally perform on a show, after which, after which I'd return home for more couch surfing. I started staying awake until 4 or 5 in the morning, because fuck it, I didn't have to be anywhere at 9 a.m. <laughs> I wrote when the feeling struck me, but there was no sense of urgency. Sure, there was work to do and dreams to pursue, but comedy wasn't going anywhere. I had never gotten to take a vacation when I was working, so I thought I should take the time to relax while I could. I rationalized that as long as I was still doing some writing and performing, it was fine. <laughs> I only planned on living like this for like a week or two. After that, I'd really get down to business. <laughs> Weeks turned into months, and my devil-may-care attitude never went away. I was stuck in my apartment most of the time because I couldn't afford to fill my days with adventures or exploring the city. I'd browse the same websites over and over or search Netflix for hours just trying to find something I wanted to watch. <laughs> I eventually reached a level of boredom so deep it seemed like nothing would bring me out of it. 
which made everything seem uninteresting. Unemployment had lost its glamour, and I was not having fun anymore. I told myself that I wanted to turn it around, to start using my time wisely. But it was too late. Depression had already worked its way in while I was playing Portal 2 for the third time. <laughs> I couldn't find the energy to wake up before 1. On the days that I tried to get out of bed earlier, I'd mash snooze for at least an hour before turning it off entirely, wondering why I even bothered, and going back to sleep. When I finally did get up, I would sit on my computer for hours, thinking I should do something productive, but continuing to look at pictures of adorable animals. <laughs> I drank almost every night, because after 10 hours of sitting by myself, it seemed like a good idea to have contact with somebody that wasn't on a 40-inch television screen. <laughs> my writing had all but come to a halt, stand-up taking a back seat to, to crushing self-loathing. Great art can come out of depression, but to make great comedy was something I couldn't seem to do. I desperately grasped at any scrap of an idea, trying to rely on my knowledge of joke writing, even though everything seemed about as funny as Schindler's List. <laughs> this is the first time I've worn pants in three days. That's kind of funny, right? No, it's not. It's just sad. <laughs> and aud audiences were not afraid to let me know. Most people aren't so cynical that they'll laugh at the very idea of somebody's life falling apart. <laughs> One night while performing a joke that I thought was my first decent bit in months, I decided to record my set. It was like listening to somebody else, someone that had given up, someone that would rather be at home wallowing in their defeat, literally doing anything besides standing on a stage. <laughs> I realized how much being laid off had affected me. Over the past six months, my life had basically become a how-to guide on poor decisions while jobless. First, decide jobs are for chumps. <laughs> Your goals can wait until tomorrow, or even better, the day after that. <laughs> Drink so often that your friends think you might have a problem. Most importantly, wait until your last month of benefits before even starting your job hunt. I knew that I needed to make a change, but there's no, there was no magical solution. I couldn't just wake up in the morning a happy go-getter with a job. If I was going to change, I had to force myself. I started setting my alarm on the other side of the room, ensuring that I'd get out of bed to turn it off or be driven insane. Before I entered the depths of the internet for the day, I made myself look for jobs for at least an hour. It was frustrating because, surprise, finding a job is hard. <laughs> but at least I felt like I was making progress. I started going to open mics more often and making a conscious effort to have a good time on stage. It was a slow process, but piece by piece, things were coming back together. Eventually, I started to think, if I had done this the whole time, Unemployment would have been awesome. <laughs> Which is why I was a little sad when a friend of mine told me that I should apply at her company. It was a good job, and at that point, I couldn't say no because unemployment my unemployment was about to run out. I knew taking the job was the right choice. I immediately felt like a real person with responsibilities and everything. It seemed like things were finally back to normal, but still, I couldn't help but thinking, Fuck! I have to work again. Evan Jones. <laughs>